have spent more than a month with the Apple Vision Pro. Apple's new Vision Pro uh, coming out this morning and, uh, well, I'm wearing one right now. The company already has 200,000 pre-orders at a starting price of $3,500. There's probably two groups of people this is for. Apple diehards and then software developers. It's not comfortable. It does not replace this. I don't just think that Quest is the better value. I think the Quest is the better product, period. And throughout this month, I saw every single review video keep mentioning about the same things again and again. This video is not one of them. I'm not gonna show you the same repetitive dinosaur demo or talk about how heavy this is. Today's video is a deep dive into my top 5 games for the Apple Vision Pro. Each of these 5 games have distinct design principles that are too good to miss. So without further ado, let us play the first game. Okay, now we are finally recording. So now this thing should work. Okay, so just watching me playing games is not gonna help you learn anything useful. So let me give you a quick overview of how this new world of spatial design really works. Firstly, you'd be noticing how app icons look very different. On iOS, they are in rounded rectangles. Here, they are in circles. That's because a circular shape draws your attention to the center of the circle. In fact, once you stare, the logo actually splits up into multiple layers. That is the level of detail these people have put in. Now, the Vision Pro only works after you have set it up with your own eyes. There's a proper onboarding process that they have, which I'll break down in the next video. But let me tell you, the second it begins, for any new person, it's nothing less than magic. In Vision OS, there is no dark or light theme. We now have glass as the only material. And this same glass also responds to your room's lighting. So it would look different in a super bright area versus in a dim area. This feature of this glass material is called vibrancy. And we'll dig deeper into this as we learn more in this series. Now let's play a game built by LEGO that has combined lighting, sound design and pinch interactions to design a super engaging gameplay. The pass through is not as clear as it looks in this recording, they actually change the rendering once you start the recording. Also the camera jitters really badly if I move fast. Now there are some stark issues that are noticeable only when you use the headset, unfortunately it's tough for me to show you how it looks on video. Alright, so the first game that I'm going to show you is Builder's Journey by Lego. So I'm in my bedroom right now and we have the cute animation of Arcade coming in. I always love this one. And we have a loading animation. Okay, now the first thing that you'd see is that it always logs me in into the gaming center and uh, not sure if you can hear it but uh, there's a sound coming in. Now, because I'm in travel mode, uh, it's slightly glitchy. So the thing is, this thing was not recording anything in my nighttime room. So I had to switch to travel mode to make this recording. So what I can now do is I can pinch and bring this thing closer to me, just like this on top of my table. And the fun part is that if I stand up, you can actually see the light shimmering now i can look at that lego piece hold it and then keep it here tap on the other hand to rotate so basically every interaction is literally with tapping even the rotation is by just a pinch look to select and pinch to pick up The sound is super cool. And it has this very magnetic feel to it. So when you're about to take a decision, it almost knows what you need to do. Now, like, just to like reiterate, these animations are extremely powerful. So I can actually move back a bit and keep it here, right on the floor. So now I can easily see it and even the tracking has become easier. 
Now look at how this experience is designed. You only rely on staring and pinching. The gameplay starts with a simple copy that has two interactions written in bold. The surface area required to play this game is very limited, so you can use it anywhere you want. The magnetic click and the outlining of hints makes the learning curve really smooth. So there are three design lessons here. Number one, use limited space to fit your experience so people can access it anywhere they want. This type of experience where you can see the background is called pass through. Moving forward, I'll show you Jetpack Joyride which hides everything in your site which comes under immersive experiences. But it's always safe to have apps that allow pass through modes. Next, include concise copy that educates your users easily. Don't assume that they are listening to the audio instructions. Next, have regular prompts and hints to help users progress fast. The glare, the outline shimmer, the magnetic feel of logo blocks coming together, all of those things help me stay motivated throughout the gameplay. They've included special focus modes where the entire setup becomes way more challenging and exciting. They put this 3D halo around the model which looks super cool in the real experience. Now let's jump to the next game, Cut the Rope, which is a super cool example of evolving a mobile first game into a spatial game. So this game was very popular in the iPhone and now they've created like an Apple Vision Pro version of it. Okay, this one is like super close to me. And I think I would probably have to keep it here at the back. And yeah, I think this one works pretty well. Tracking is slightly off. And what I can do is I can probably keep it here on the very top. And if I hold the digital crown, I can look at the sound and then reduce the sound so that I don't get distracted. And the best part about this game is that Instead of hiding everything else in my environment, they've created like this cute window where I can just like see things in the middle and I'm not completely detached from the world. So I really like that. And even if I look here and there, like it has a complete immersive frame. Uh, and just to let you know that usually in the actual experience when the travel mode is off, the tracking is so much better, like it's insane. Now I have to look at the cannon and shoot and of course i did not get any prizes but the interesting part here is that they've created levels that are extremely easy and extremely short so that you're regularly working on something so then uh, the graphics are extremely cool like it's it's extremely high fidelity you really really don't feel that this thing is on a screen like it actually feels like these people are in this world and if i step and walk a bit uh, I, I can't see through the window, like, I think it's not 3D in the middle frame, but I think overall everything outside of the frame, it is pretty much 3D. So that was cut the rope. And of course, the, the animation is great. I think they've sort of done a lot of work here when it comes to the 3D rendering, because you can see that even the stars and the animations, everything is sort of working in 3D and I can bring this super close to me and almost hide everything else, right? So now this is absolutely in front of me and I can look at a rope and simply cut it I don't have to swipe through it and that was a bad move but let me just show you one more alternative let's see okay how do I even I have no clue how to make this work this is actually a very smart game Oh, okay. Awesome. So yeah, I think I really, really love this because this was able to give me a very solid experience without detaching everything else. It's super crazy how crisp and real the gameplay looks. I have played this game in bigger spaces and they've actually built a proper structure behind the frame as well. That is the level of detail they've put into this. Now to summarize the most important lessons, the developers of Cut the Rope took their two-dimensional game and converted it into a spatial game by simply placing their UI into a 3D frame. They didn't reinvent their game structure. They simply replaced the hover and the touch with stare and pinch. 
they simply kept what worked for them but positioned it inside a 3D frame which gave the experience a whole new dimension. Next, they designed the entire experience around just staring and pinching. Any user can play this game even if they are tired or in limited space. And in the end, all the levels gradually go from super simple to really complex. And the levels are very carefully designed to make sure that the player is consistently getting encouraged to keep moving forward. Next, we have Wisp World, which in my opinion had the prettiest interaction so far. Now, let me show you how this game looks when you're playing it in a bigger space with more light. And let me show you the next game in line, which is... Wisp World. Now I really like this one. This is not a very thrilling or a very useful game in general, but I really like it because of the subtle details. So let me bring this game close to me. Even in the logo, they have these very interesting layers. Like there are three layers in the logo. Let me actually keep the mic in my hand. It keeps on getting detached. So the reason why I like this game is because when this avatar comes in, so they have this avatar called Wisp, so you can see that, right? So this Wisp thing, it sort of responds to my touch and I can speak to it. So it speaks, oops, sorry. I actually stopped the game by mistake. Let me bring it close to me. Let me look at that button and I can tap to type. So I can say yes and you can just speak to it. It's almost like having your own mini chat GPT. So. Hi. Yes, you are talking to a human. Now it's saying, can you give me more pollen delights? Can you try and pop some of these small buds? Now this is the most interesting part because can you see these buds? I can tap on them and then have this character eat them. And it's very responsive, like it's almost insane how crazy this looks, right? And now imagine this with extremely sharp tracking. And I can just keep on popping these and notice how every single interaction is basically relying on me pinching, right? They could have done something like a hit as well, but most of it is around pinching and swiping. So the game developers have kept this thing in mind and it's just so cool. Like I just wish I could hold it and this looks extremely real. All right, much better. Thank you. You are welcome to keep tapping buds. Would you like to talk more? And then I can speak into it so I can say, yes, I would love to speak to you. Done. And here you are. Oh man, this looks so trippy. Sure. What do you want to know? Even the eye tracking is very strong. Like I can just look at something and tap on it. So it says the mysteries of your earthly existence. I'm curious about the concept of time. Can you explain to me what it means to have a past, present and future? Now, I think this is where the game becomes slightly weird because it's not that easy to type something in the air. Like it's very exhausting and I'm not sure what is the purpose of this game. Maybe I've skipped the onboarding, but incredibly realistic and interactive. To summarize, this game also takes very limited space. You can easily rotate the world, walk 360 degrees around it, and their main character responds really well to your hands. The entire chatbot concept is good, but I wish they had MCQ options instead of us typing all the responses. The pinching interaction is absolutely incredible and realistic. When those particles dissolve and spread into space, it's almost like you're in a magical world. However, I wish the app had more features and objects to play with. The biggest downside of this app is that the questions that they ask are too complicated to answer. So it would have been so much better if they had simpler conversational starters. So the next game I want to show is Jetpack Joyride. This again is a game that was extremely, extremely successful on the iPad, on the iPhone. And I 
absolutely love this game by Halfbrick. I think Halfbrick has done incredible when it comes to creating experiences for the Apple Vision Pro. And uh, the only reason why I love this game so much is because it really takes you into a different world altogether. So now everything is going to go away super soon. Like it, they have already dimmed it and boom, everything is gone. I can just see my hands and let's play Jetpack Joyride. Just look in pinch. They keep repeating this onboarding again and again. And I love this because now I don't care about the terrible tracking. I think now the tracking is absolutely immaculate and I can look literally in any direction and I can see myself on a desk and I just need to look at a button and the game has started and like look everything has dimmed even in the room and they have this interesting onboarding and when I tap I'm basically being able to get hold of his jetpack and yeah I mean look how crazy this is look at the visuals the latency like there is literally zero latency when I pinch like the reaction times the graphics the colors it's so cool. Okay, I think I have to avoid the zappers. For, for some reason, I literally forgot that I had a mic in my hand. See, that's the power of this experience. Like, you literally forget if there's anything happening in the outside world. Like, it is that immersive. You barely see anything else happening. Okay, now it turns out we have some interesting weapons see it's so cool how they have managed to create this environment which is outside has these small small models and i'm pretty sure that eventually they will add more in-app purchases where you could customize all of these different apps now of course you see my hand right here this is called hand occlusion the fact that they're able to differentiate my hands and it's slightly weird i think even without the travel mode it has a lot of issues uh, and sometimes it just does a really really good job so now if I press the crown I would eventually come back to real life so that was by half break to summarize the immersive experience is both the best and the worst part about jetpack joyride they should 100% have a pass through mode just like cut the rope so that I can enjoy this game in my room while I can see everything around me However, the fully immersive experience does feel really cool. Jetpack Joyride and almost every other game that I played has a very quick 20 second onboarding flow and they make sure that the user doesn't have to move their neck too much to play the game. Just like Cut the Rope, the main gameplay of Jetpack Joyride is identical to what you would find on the iPad and on the iPhone. All they've done is that instead of hovering and pressing, they are now relying on pinch and they've created a 3D experience, a frame of 3D objects around their original tried and tested two-dimensional game. But I really really wish they had like a 3D dimension inside the window as well. That's something that even Cut the Rope should have done. But when it comes to the first draft, I personally love both Jetpack Joyride and Cut the Game. However, I was just super excited to visualize Jetpack Joyride in your own room as well. Imagine if the background was off and this person was creating this entire gameplay inside your room itself. I think that would have been incredible. And the last game that I wanted to show you is my favorite one which is Fruit Ninja. Now for Fruit Ninja I would probably have to look this place. So let me click on Super Fruit Ninja. So they've renamed it as Super Fruit Ninja. They have uh, completely changed the branding and the levels as well. And this one, look at the difference. Like this one is so close to me from day one itself. And here you have the loading screen. Uh, just some important things to note that even if I look on different directions, you'd realize that the Fruit Ninja logo itself has this very cool texture and this needs pretty high, like high speed internet to run. Like anytime I open this game, it takes a lot of time to load. It is still floating, but uh, even if I were to stand up, uh, it would sort of reach to my height. Like it would know that Ansh is now standing, but I can always go back. And once I go back, you would see it disappear, right? So of course, I'm in my travel mode. That's why it's saying to stay stationary. Like Apple Vision Pro doesn't let you record any videos if there is low lighting. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't want us to see how grainy it gets. But uh, I, I see their point. And here we are. Takes a bit time to set things up, but it's absolutely worth it. 
and while it is loading you'd notice that on the floor we have these grasses and rocks coming up and that's a very cool effect uh, like when i play this in a big room in a big arena the experience is incredible like you see so much so many of these throughout the floor so it can actually keep a track of where things are and if you have a big room uh, there would be this guru that comes up now look at this fruit right here like just for a second can you imagine this is real like the the clarity of the text the onboarding like it's just incredible and now we have this guru and this play button in front of me let me just remove my leg and you see that watermelon there's a reason why that watermelon got stuck there there's a reason why that pig is walking there because they can keep a track of my room like they're able to figure out where objects are in my room so let's have these fruits coming in so the fruit is coming from a different window because it's probably not able to understand that we have a tv here so let me stand and i think i just have to like cut these fruits put one hand on another i have no clue what to do here so i've been using this entire thing for a very long time and the guy is on my bed now the guy is literally on my bed now okay so i think i had to like i can probably throw the fruit and the pig is also there they have put a seat thing as well so how, how what do i yeah it's like this is so stupid like how what am i supposed to do with this i actually played this game with my friend so yeah the travel mode has again come on i think i would have to probably make a different video altogether to show you how it works but uh, i'm pretty sure you would have understood that uh, this thing is extremely extremely magical right and let me just stop the recording so it was in my second attempt that i understood what this game was trying to say so it turns out that this game allows you to swipe and throw ninja blades and this is the first time i was seeing these interactions there was no other game that has introduced new interactions so fruit ninja was the first one the game also has these new modes where you can activate this electric ninja sign and actually feel like a superhero this was an absolutely crazy feature There's also this one special fruit that blocks out everything when you slice it and it is so difficult to explain you how crazy and immersive this scene is because I played it and for a second I was just shocked to see how realistic and how crazy it looked. At one point I had forgotten about the weight of my Vision Pro, the pass through everything just disappeared because the gameplay itself was so engaging. To summarize Fruit Ninja is officially my favorite game on the Apple Vision Pro. The entire experience is absolutely incredible. They've not only leveraged Pinch but added new interactions as well. Now, they've rebranded the game and they've called it as Super Fruit Ninja, which is pretty smart. However, the game relies heavily on our ability to slash fruits fast. When I played this game on the iPad, I used to like swipe super fast. However, the Apple Vision Pro is not very good at capturing such fast movements. It would have been so much better if they had launched an underwater version or a space version of Fruit Ninja. That way, they could have made the fruits come slowly and every slash would have been slower, making the new experience not only novel but also compatible with Vision Pro's limitations. There are a lot of visible glitches. The game keeps on failing to track the surface. If you move a lot, you will often see a lot of things getting jittery, but I just cannot complain because it's just too good to be nitpicky at this point i think for version 1 this game was an absolute gem and if you had to play any game on the apple vision pro i think it should be fruit ninja and this is just the beginning like in the upcoming videos i will be showing you all the productivity apps all the immersive apps all the immersive content that this thing has because i think it's supremely important to talk about these things and learn about them like this is version 1 this is literally the worst apple vision pro that humanity will ever see so if this is where we start from you can obviously imagine where this thing is going to be in the next 2 to 3 years because this is not an ar and vr headset like if you go to apple.com if you go to their website you'd realize that they've not even used the word headset anywhere in their website and if this thing does well this spatial computer if this thing does well this is not only going to impact the computer industry but the desktop industry 
the screen industry, the monitor industry, the keyboard industry, speakers, mouse, even desks. I'm pretty sure there's a desk guy sitting in his company thinking, how will Vision Pro ever impact my business? I know that this version is probably not for consumers. I think it's mostly for developers and designers. But if you are in the tech world, I'm pretty sure that our series is going to be extremely valuable to you. Now, I'd like to remind you that our YouTube channel is primarily about learning the most creative and exciting tech skills in the world. We've already taught product design through our videos and our free learning platform, LearnUIUX.in. We've taught you ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Prompt Engineering with another free learning platform, HowToPrompt.in. But now, in 2024, it's time to learn about AR, VR, and spatial computing. But before we invest in this, I want to know if you even want to learn about this new field. We had already created something five months back, but back then I didn't have a Vision Pro to practically experience my lessons. But now I've invested a lot of money in getting this device and understanding how it works just to make sure that our YouTube channel becomes the most valuable resource on the internet when it comes to learning product design for free. So if you're interested in learning more, comment below with your thoughts. And I want you to subscribe and hit the bell icon because majority of you have still not subscribed to us. This video was just a playful tour, but I am thinking about going really deep into the principles of spatial design. So your comments will help us gauge if people are even interested in this or not. With that being said, I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you enjoyed this video, then do check out this video of the same series. I am sure that it will help you even more.